Hi guys, welcome back to Jason Journey Build. So we are doing part two of the Kawasaki Mule uh, head gasket replacement. So uh, the other video was getting a little long, so I figured it'd be easier just to split it up. So, and it was at a good point because we got it tore down. We uh, determined what parts we needed. So we ordered a head gasket, exhaust gasket, a thermostat gasket, a thermostat, and got a new belt. So really with this mule, I think what we determined that its biggest issue was that uh, the belt had wore out on it because um, actually thinking about it a little bit more, he was having some trouble with, uh, he thought was uh, maybe a, a discharge or something over time. He said he'd have to charge his battery so I'm thinking that's where his uh, issues with uh, the overheating and the charging came from was basically the belt. But um, we went ahead and pulled the head. You know, we found that pretty early on in the last video, but we went ahead and pulled the, the head off because he had overheated it uh, several times and we just wanted to go ahead and make sure. And we did find just a little uh, small spot in the head gasket that was suspect and this right here just lets him know that the engine will be in good shape when we give it back to him because again it it has almost 2,000 hours so this is just a a good spot to go ahead and do this and and he'll be in good shape for hopefully years to come all right well, let's get this thing put back together so i'll show you a few things i did uh since the last video so I cleaned up the head really good. I've got a vat in the back where it's, it has um, just cleaning fluid in it where I can get there and really rinse this thing off good and clean the head out. Uh, so anyways, this is good. We went ahead and dressed it out make sure we didn't have any material left on the head itself on the surface. We did the same thing to the engine. So that uh, surface is prepped. But while we're right here at it, I want to show you the belt. This is the difference in the belt. This is how wore out his belt was. And this is what the belt is supposed to look like. So, yeah, there's your part number. Turn it sideways. So, what I'll do in the description, I'll, I'll put the part number to all these parts. And you can find them on eBay, Amazon. Uh, so there was, you know, several different people that had it and the prices weren't too bad. So uh, let's, let's get this thing put together. And one thing I didn't mention was the, these engines vibrate so bad. And this was the mount that holds the belt cover. Well, your belt cover also holds your alternator and all that stuff. Everything kind of ties back together. Well, both ears were broke off, so it was just free over here. So while I had it off, I went ahead and pulled it out, welded both sides, and we got it um, put back on. So if yours is the same way, this is a good time to fix all that stuff. Okay, guys, so as you can see, you know, I've got it cleaned up real good. What I do is I take a razor blade, turn it on end, and really just try to clean off all the, the buildup and make sure we get all the old material off. And then wire brush it really good, just because we want to make sure we get a real good seal. We got our new head gasket. Just want to make sure we get that turned correctly. Get there. We have our new exhaust gasket. We'll go on the head here. We got all these surfaces cleaned. Now it's kind of the trick getting this thing back in there. And what I'm doing, I'm looking through my 
lifter valley here and I can tell the head needs to go towards the front of the of the mule before the fall on the pin there it goes if you'll just look through your bolt holes and you'll make sure that your head gasket's still lined up mine is and kind of just push it over just a little bit because the exhaust is kind of holding it so tight but we're good up front we're good at the back so what we need to do is go ahead and get our head bolts make sure they're good and clean and then we'll get the head torqued down now before we do anything else all right so for the head bolts you can always look at the ones that were inside the valve cover and the ones that weren't so i just try to keep them that way now some people prefer to change their their head bolts right now at this point but you look in the manual the manual doesn't state it now some people say it does but that may be on older versions of this engine or whatever but they just talked about 28 foot pounds torque basically so i'm gonna leave that up to you guys i'm just showing you what i do right or wrong this is my way of had luck with it. Okay guys, so what I'm gonna start with is just get just run them down. I, I don't wanna I don't want this to torque them. Just get it closed. Okay guys, so we're gonna torque our head. And what we're going to do, we're going to start off with 10 foot pounds on all of our bolts and we're going to start from the center and alternate back and forth. You go from one to the other, back and forth, and you keep working your way out to the outside of the head. So again, we're going to start with 10 foot pounds. I'm going to go to 25. I believe 25 is what's in the spec and I, I'll bring it up probably about 27, 28 by the time I'm done with it. But um, again, this is me just that little extra I, I think it wouldn't hurt and plus i want to account for any inconsistencies in my torque wrench if it's you know i don't know the last time it's been calibrated so let's see that jonah so right now we're at about we're about 10 foot pounds i hear the click so we're going to go straight over to the next one there's 10. so you guys that were worried when i was running it down with my electric impact I was just being real easy. I, I didn't even put 10 foot pounds on it. So then I'll get over and I'll cross them. The next one. Okay, now I'm gonna go to 25. So from here, uh, we've got them torqued to 25 foot-pounds. I'm gonna go to 28 foot-pounds and we should be good to go. The 28 foot-pounds is just a sanity check. All right. Okay, so at this point, guys, I wanna go ahead and get my rocker arms in, the push rods and rocker arms. So we can, while I have the crank pulley exposed, we can use the crank nut so we can turn the engine as we uh, go ahead and check our valves and make sure the lash is set correctly. So right now we're just gonna drop our push rods in. I put a little drop of oil down on top of the lifters just to make sure that they were getting lubricated. All right, so don't forget your little um, little caps that go on top of your valves. Get those installed. Make 
So you get all your rockers turned the right way and get your push rods lined up. As far as your rocker arm assembly, your bolts on top need to be torqued 15 foot-pounds. So I'm just going to start in the center. Okay guys, so the next thing I want to do is go ahead and get my valve set. And you want to start with your number one cylinder at top dead cylinder. <laughs> you want to start with your number one cylinder at top dead center. And right now, I don't have any clearance between these two. So I believe that tells me that I'm 180 out. Because right down here, let's see if Joni can show you, is um, my notch on my pulley and my the timing mark there is at zero, but that could be 180 out. So let me spin it once and we'll see what happens. Right there. All right. So guys, see after turning it at 180, now I'm loose where I need to be. So, and this is in the manual that tell you, you know, which direction to check your clearance. And so what we're looking for is eight thousandths on exhaust and intake. So let me get my feeler gauge. Okay, so with we're at top dead center on the compression stroke. So we can go ahead and set our eight thousandths on number one cylinder. We can actually do both valves. So, and that is actually really close already. Because what I did is I made sure I put the same push rods back in the on the same cylinder. So basically, what you, what I want to do is just loosen that up, and then we'll turn this until I get a little drag. I don't want to get too much. What I do is I, I'll hold my screwdriver, and then I'll take my ten millimeter and. Just get that snow back up. Yeah, that's a little loose. A little bit more. Let's see. Yeah, that's too tight. You see how close that is? It is. Just as you tighten the nut, you're also moving this stem, so you're losing a little bit. So you have to kind of play with it. That's perfect goes in with a little drag so, just right so now we'll do the same thing with this one that one was close so I'm just gonna give it a little bit that's a little much like that so now we can do the intake valve on number three at, within the same location, and then we can do the exhaust valve on number two. So we can do these two valves without having to turn the engine again. So we'll start here on number two. That's really loose. And what I do, just loosen it up and turn just small increments a little far that time. Still a little bit too much. I like that. 
Okay guys, so I'm gonna have to turn the engine 360 degrees and put my timing mark down here back on the, you know, the two timing marks, let's line them up, let's spin the engine one time and then I can do my intake of number two and the exhaust of number three. Okay, these are the timing marks I'm talking about guys. So I'm about to spin that 360 degrees. Okay. So now you guys can see my intake and my exhaust are now free. And I can check those. All right, so I'm gonna just kind of clean, make sure my injectors are a little clean. I've been real careful with this. I, I should have mentioned that to start with. You really don't want anything in those. Try to keep those clean the whole time that I've been working on this and cleaning up all my other parts. And guys, what I'm, what I was just using is just brake cleaner. Make sure that messes out and I'm not going to blow hard in them. I just want to make sure there's no grit in there. Get these lines snug down nice. So we're gonna go ahead and start putting our our exhaust bolts in. Get all this good and tightened up. And then next I'll go ahead and put my valve cover on because I don't need to chance dropping any garbage down in the engine all right so I went ahead and put my rubber gasket back in the valve cover here and then just you need know, to set this back in place all right just these you just kind of snug down because it's it's sitting on a, that rubber gasket and so are these so you just want them tight enough or they won't leak but you don't want to just keep tidying until you, you break something so. that all feels good all right so we're going to go ahead and put our our cross strap on for our for the glow plugs Okay, so we can tighten the first two. You don't want to over tighten this. Easy done. And then we need to get our wires. Then you have your little, little caps that go in there. Just keeps you from dropping something on it and shorting something out. All right, so before I get too caught up, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall my, my return line, my diesel, the diesel fuel return line on the 
rail here. And just push it on. And then you got the clamp behind it. Okay, this is one of the more aggravating parts to me anyways, is you gotta get one of your mounts that goes through this uh, engine support into the head, and then you gotta come back behind it and then put a second bolt in that holds your the uh, dipstick in place. So it's just there's not a any real easy way to get in there to it. Just gotta hold your mouth right. I had to get Joni to help me here, guys, to kind of pull this bracket up just a little bit. So she had to put the camera down. So I get this started. She's a pretty good sport sitting out here in this hot weather. Man, it is. I'm soaked. Well, I need some painting done inside, too. <laughs> so she's gonna put me to work here too. Mm -hmm. Okay guys, so we've got this bolt tight, so now I need to get my lower dipstick bolt in. And again, there's just not a lot of room to do much on this. Alright, so guys it, this bolt right up under here holding the dipstick tube was a was a bear it's probably the worst part of the whole job to me so i've got it tight i've got the forward one tight now so now i need to tighten my last bolt that we just loosened so we could get the head bolt out we'll get it tightened we'll get our breather hooked back up and then we'll go install the thermostat So now I'll just get our breather hose hooked up. Okay, so your thermostat, you've got this you know, your little bleeder there and then this other hole is where this screw goes in. So apparently, like I was telling you guys on the other video, my uh, 310 didn't have this little screw holding it in the thermostat housing. And plus it also had a breather, a like a bleed screw up here where you could help bleed the system of air. So anyways, we line this up, the rubber goes inside, and then you have a little screw that holds that thermostat in place. All right, so I've got my thermostat housing tight, and then you have your sending wire here. That plugged up. In here, I removed the bolts that hold the center of the forward drive shaft so I could pivot it out of the way. I didn't take the drive shaft out, I just pivoted it and moved it towards the passenger side so I could pull the guard up. So that, that I didn't mention that to start with, and um, that'll be something that you'll have to do to get that guard out. So if you want to be able to put a, a wrench or something on your crank pulley. So now what I need to do is we need to work on getting our belt and all this other equipment back on here so we can get our, our alternator tightened up, belt tightened up, and get it where we can get our hoses put back on. So we have our new belt here. Go ahead and get it over the crank. Okay, so what I did guys is I left my bottom bolt on the alternator tight so that way I can move the alternator and, and it'll hold tension on this. It won't be too loose. So actually I need to loosen this up a little more so that'll slide. Okay guys, Joni had a, a good observation. She said, why don't you go ahead and tighten up your alternator pulley? Well, it's like I told her, that makes better sense, but I can't because the 
the guard has to be in place for me to put the fan on so I can't tighten my water pump pulley and my fan until the, the guard's in place. So all I can really do right now is make sure I get most everything where it's supposed to be. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this down because I, this will rotate with no problem. So my alternator is still pretty tight except for this bolt here. And we'll be able to tighten that in a second. So what I wanna do now is make sure these, these bolts are pretty close. So I can set this in and we'll get our fan and put it on. All right, so now we'll go back down on this. Okay, so we've got our guard in place, so make sure you have your spacer. And then go ahead and get your bolts started. If you got a bolt that keeps trying to fall out as you're pushing it in, you can just take a piece of tape or whatever. I just use just a little piece of a little drop of silica gasket or silicone on the head of the bolt and it'll hold it in there for you. So you have three bolts that hold the guard on to the engine. Then one down a little down here. Okay guys, so what I'm doing now is, is tightening my alternator belt. And uh, just use a crowbar and just basically push against the back of it and make sure it's good and tight. Just got Joni there. You good? Okay, I caught it with my wrist. Sorry if the camera was shaking. <laughs> That turns the engine, so that's good. All right, so now we just need to get our fan guard put back on, and then we can look about, see about getting water in it. Guys, what I did here was just put a bar and kind of pulled this out of the way just a little bit so this would go by it. So we're going to get our intake put on. That's a, a bolt. Right under here. All right, so finally guys, we're gonna get our our hoses put on. So we got our two clamps here, clamp here. So go down here to our lower hose. Our upper hose up here. Last hose right here in front of the engine next to the alternator. I 
All right. So we're reassembled, Johnny. Oh yeah. All right, guys. So we're we're got everything put back together. So what I did is, uh, well, I need to show you something. I, I removed the vent line. That's a little vent screw. All right, guys. So remove your vent screw right here on your. This is the return to the radiator. Because what we need to do is uh, let this thing burp all the air out of the system. And what I did is I got a jack and I jacked the front of the the mule up as high as I could get it. So I've got it as high as I can get. I have a jack stand underneath it. We have our bleed screw out. And so we're just going to start adding our 50-50 mix and um, right. so I can just put that on there now. So like this, that um, like Johnny said, the water just started running out, which is good. So what I'm going to do is I just barely put the screw in so it can keep working the air out of the system. I'm going to put this in until it stops in the funnel. What I did was kind of made this funnel sit tight into the radiator so I can put a little bit of head on it. And then once we have this thing pretty full of water, we're bleeding out there, we'll see if it'll crank up and then we'll let the system circulate a little while and keep adding water until we feel like, until you can see that the air bubbles have settled down. And then we'll have to go back and make sure our overflow tank here is full too. Here, all those bowls inside. Stop right there. Nice. I don't know if you guys can hear it hissing. I don't like your air compressor things on. Yeah. Well, it was, you could hear the air wanting to come out. Back it up a little bit because it's going to. That's what I heard about. Okay, so we're going to see if this thing will crank. This is the first time we've tried it. So. It may take a second until the injectors pump up.
So guys, as you can hear, it's still getting a little bit of air out of the system. I've got the cap on it now. And this is what this is designed to do. So this will uh, draw water in as it needs it, as it cools off, or as it's getting hot. And then as the pressure builds, it'll run it back in here. But right now it's still blowing off some uh, air bubbles, which is really good. All right, it just quit. So, few times of running this thing let the air out let it cool off good and um, you can come back check your water in your overflow there um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the oil in it real quick I'm sure you guys have done that before I got my new oil filter so we'll go ahead and change the oil I'm gonna let it cool off good I'll check the water one last time but uh, running it around the fan cycles on and off that's good we never got a light and um, I guess I could show you guys how to check that real quick and make sure that your dash light works because you hate running around looking in case the indicator light comes on tell you it's hot and then it, it just doesn't work. So uh, let me show you that real quick and we'll end this video. Okay guys, so what you want to do is turn your key on. So you see the little oil lights on right now. It's on because it's not running. And then what you'll do is you'll pull your wire off of your your thermostat housing and just put your piece of wire in here and ground it. So when you ground it, and Joni will show you on the dash there, my light's working. So see? So if the engine was getting too hot, it would let me know. And right now it's uh, water circulating, doing what it's supposed to. So that's a good check for you guys to do too is without a mechanical gauge telling you the actual temperature, you're basically relying on that light to come on and help you save your engine. So, anyways, I hope this has helped you guys. Um, when I was doing my, my 310 right there, Johnny can show you, it's a, it has the same diesel, and I couldn't really find a good video on doing this, so I'm not saying this is a good one, but there's a lot more information in it than I could find prior to it. So good luck and uh, hopefully get yours back on the road too. Thanks for watching. Y'all take care. Bye.